I'm James Donahue with Team 3 for the Urban Air Mobility Pro Project. The project covers the vision of an urban air mobility, or UAM, a form of transportation that lessens ground congestion and traffic efficiencies. The motivation behind this project is that there is a large economic impact to cities' economies due to inefficiencies in con traffic and congestion. Having a UAM would improve economic productivity. The mission of this project is to create a cost-effective, environmentally friendly, and easy-to-use vehicle to change urban transportation for the better, making it less time-consuming, safer, and affordable for normal citizens. All right, so we identified four main stakeholders for this project, and obviously it's citizens that are using the vehicle. On top of that, we've got the FAA and city regulatory agencies, um, as well as suppliers slash manufacturers, and then ground traffic and public transportation. Um, so from there, we identified needs that um, what we need to be met so that our stakeholders are happy. Um, basically, these just fell right in line with our mission statement. So it needs to be economical, safe, secure, environmentally friendly, fast, provide ample coverage, needs to be accessible to the public, it needs to be efficient, it needs to conform to all regulations, and it needs to provide social and or health benefits. Um, so then we developed numerical requirements for these as much as we could. And then from here, which we'll explain later in the QFD and House of Quality, um, we went on to determine what the best way to meet these requirements were. The concept operations for this project include seven major phases. One, boarding of personnel. Two, securing of such personnel and departure. Three, initial ascent above urban or suburban areas. Four, joining a flight plan towards destination. Five, descent towards destination. Six, attached to landing zone. And seven, disembarking of personnel. This con ops covers each phase of the operation. And here is a timeline of how of each operation step over one hour time. It may not require a number or one hour, or it may require more than one hour. However, this timetable is adaptable to the needs of the route. Hi, I'm Sultan Walir, and I'm going to run through our functionality analysis. So the vehicle's overall function is to transport passengers. For that, we will have four system top-level functions, pre-flight operations, takeoff operations, flight operations and post landing operation. Here's the pre-flight operations function flow block diagram. First, the vehicle needs to be charged, then perform the boarding operations, set the passenger destinations, set the best route and the average speed. After that, system will move on to perform takeoff operations. For takeoff operations, system will provide the safety guidelines to passengers and then will notify passengers to fasten seat belts. After that, it will che check necessary things before the flight and it will notify the air traffic management system before takeoff. After taking off, it will perform the flight operations. For the flight operations, we will have three sets of parallel functions. First, we will need to provide physical things to maintain the flight, such as providing aerodynamic performance and maintaining the structural integrity. After that, we will provide passengers with accommodations and various information about the flight. It will then get ready for the landing and determine the spot for landing and then move on to perform post-landing operations. For the post-landing operations, system will bring the vehicle to full stop, drop off the passengers and sanitize the cabin, accept new passengers for the next trip. After that, it will move on to pre-flight operations. With that, we will complete the cycle of four system top level functions. We created and adapted House of Quality to help focus our engineering design on our customer needs. So we determined three main stakeholders who would be affected by our design and then we determined what it is that they needed. So we took our 11 uh, stakeholder needs and broke them down into four categories. 
and then broke those down further into uh, tertiary needs. So for example, the need of the vehicle to be safe can break down into not causing harm to people nor causing damage to property. Now for each need, we rated its importance to each individual stakeholder with one being not very important and five being very important to that stakeholder. Next, we were able to benchmark uh, different concept solutions in the urban air mobility space, again on uh, a scale of one to five. Now because these are mostly concepts and the designs aren't very mature, we weren't able to get total information on whether or not they met the needs uh, that we have listed here. So in the future, as these designs mature, you can go back as a design team and fill these in and reassess later. Next, we have the engineering characteristics. Each has a metric and a direction of improvement. So as vehicle speed in miles per hour increases, we would consider that an improvement. And now each of the engineering characteristics um, has a relationship with the other characteristics, whether it be positive, no relationship, or negative relationship. And that is listed here in our correlations box. Next, we related the customer need to the engineering characteristic using that same plus, zero, and minus uh, relationship. And those are summarized here in the importance ratings. So for example, you can see that power efficiency isn't very related to our customer needs, doesn't have a very strong relationship in comparison to something like the ease of entry for the vehicle. So below that, we have our objective measures. Again, for each of the concept solutions in the space, we're able to find some metrics on the engineering characteristics. Again, as designs mature, the team will be able to go back and enter more information into these boxes here. And then finally, we have our design targets listed in yellow. Um, these design targets are based on the importance ratings, um, how we compare to the other solutions in the space, as well as our specific design problem. Hello, everyone. Uh, since we have our requirements uh, all figured out, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the concept generation and uh, kind of the process we went through to figure out a concept. So for our concept generation and selection, we started as individuals in the group. Uh, each member of the group, there's six of us, uh, decided that we would come up with concepts on our own. Uh, so each person came up with a few concepts of either a portion of the vehicle or the entire vehicle itself. And then from there, each member uh, narrowed it down to their favorite choice, which one they preferred, and then brought that choice to the team. So now if you look at all six of our members, that would bring us to this sort of a process, where we have six different concepts coming in uh, as into a team meeting, where we all sat together and decided uh, from there. So since this is a little bit big and hard to see on the screen, let's just go ahead and focus on half of it, uh, as if we had maybe three people in the group. So looking at this closer, um, from here our process was then to choose an idea um, and then as a team list it all in our Excel document, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And then uh, from there expand again on more concepts and then um, narrow down from there, uh, selecting based on our criteria, you know, whether it was better than our reference or it was worse than our reference or it was the same. So in this diagram here, you can kind of see the flow of our process. So you see um, you know, that, that funnel that was talked about in lecture and how we do have, um, it, it gets larger, then smaller as you select a concept, then you add some more concepts, and then it gets smaller again from there. Uh, so some of the selection criteria we discussed as a group was the ease of use for the passenger, the ease of management, accessibility to the passenger, manufacturability, so this is how expensive and how easy it is to manufacture, positive environmental impact, because of course in this day and age the environment is very important and we need to make sure our designs are uh, living up to that. And then of course finally maintainability. Now I'm going to go over to our spreadsheet and walk you through a little bit of behind the scenes of uh, what we did looking forward. Here we are at our concept generation and selection spreadsheet which we created as a group. Um, you'll see here the possible solutions for each component of the system. Uh, so we could have an electric system, a hybrid system, chemical system, nuclear system, combustion, or even a turbine system. Um, and then how do we charge and refuel those? 
um, and then everything from our boarding operations all the way down to how do we take off, how do we uh, provide thrust and um, provide power in the cabin. Um, we, we really wanted to look at a, a bunch of possibilities um, and kind of assess everything that could possibly happen in a day-to-day -day mission. So you see here we have a matrix of the concepts and how we rank them each as individuals in the team. So a negative would indicate that it was worse than our favorite model or our reference model. Um, a zero is it's the same and then a plus is that it actually performs better. So at the end of the day our final concept is the EV toll uh, concept which as a team we decided was the best. So ultimately the design that we decided to go with is we're going to have a fully electric mostly autonomous vehicle that will be remotely controlled for takeoff and landing because those are the most perilous parts of the mission. Um, it's really similar to what Starship does here um, where they stop at crosswalks and someone remotely drives them across. Um, and it's going to be kind of basically just an air Uber infrastructure where users can use an app, order their Uber, but it's not an Uber, it's our urban air mobility vehicle. I mean, it will arrive, pick them up, and then deliver them to their destination. Um, there's also a lot of customer accommodations in this concept. We have in-flight Wi-Fi, in-flight Bluetooth for speakers, things like that. Um, and we even went as far as to sanitize the cabin with uh, COVID-19 concerns. I think that's something that's very important. And so we have a spray that gets, uh, you know, the, the vehicle gets fogged between each flight. And then we also have a HEPA filter um, in each of these. So that's just a little uh, view of our final concept that we decided. In this project, we made basic assumptions such as municipalities' ability to, and willingness to implement such a program, autopilot systems that are able to control such, aerial, such an aerial, aerial vehicle, buildings designed to have landing platforms in urban areas, and batteries on the vehicle that are able to retain enough charge in order to have the craft aloft long enough. Hi, I'm Zach Steele, um, so I'm going to run through our risk assessment and cost and value assessment. Um, so how we did risk assessment is we came up with a list of potential risks and then assigned them each a likelihood of occurring and then an impact that those risks would have on our systems were they to occur. So for example, a system failure where the aircraft falls out of the sky is probably not very likely, but if that happens, it's obviously very impactful. It could result in loss of life, so that's a five. Um, as to where if the vehicle is not available because it's charging or if we are late to pick up a customer, um, that could happen quite often, but it's not actually that big of a deal. So then once we had those values, we just made a risk assessment matrix where we plotted um, the likelihood of all of these things versus the impact that they'll have. And what you can see here is that although there are some things that are very likely or things that are very impactful, there aren't any that are both. So we deemed that this is, while there are risks associated with this project, um, it's not risky enough that we need to abort it. And ultimately we're okay with the risks associated with it. So moving on to cost and value assessment, um, we started off by finding the average Uber ride cost right there. Um, we got an estimated cost for developing a vehicle um, from a proposal that Uber Elevate had. Um, we scaled that up to the value of that cost in three years um, using the present value of money equation. Um, we assume that we need one employee per um, 10 vehicles um, because obviously they're remotely landing and um, taking off. Um, and then we calculated the cost that it will um, per flight that we'll have to charge to recoup that investment over three years. And what you can see is that that's $27 and this is 25. So really it's pretty much the same, which means that we're comfortable charging that rate because we think consumers will be willing to pay a little bit more for what should be a faster and more ideal experience. And then here we just plotted our profit per vehicle over time. Obviously it starts at that negative 340,000 because you paid that up front and then you make money over time and you can see it after three years, you've made your money back. Overall, our group came together and felt that we properly applied all the systems engineering concepts that we have learned in this class throughout this project. We are presented with a challenge of determining how to reduce the $87 billion loss in productivity each year within the United States. We believe that with our design of EV toll, we can accomplish this goal while still making a profit. Our group feels that if this system is implemented within cities across the world, that traffic congestion will slowly start to decrease as the road infrastructure will not be as heavily relied on. Our goal is to not replace the current means of transportation, but to add an additional option for those who will benefit from it. And for those that will, our group developed a solution that will provide a safe, convenient, efficient, accessible, affordable, and environmentally friendly mode of transportation. Thank you for watching our presentation.